Battle of Font Ridge After two days of fierce fighting on the left flank of the 3rd Division Marine's beachhead, in an area now known as Bunshu Ridge, the Marines suffered 613 casualties. The 21st Marines, in the center, delayed their advance on July 22nd until the 3rd could catch up. Marines in exposed ridge positions were getting hammered by Japanese mortar fire. The barrage was so intense that Colonel Arthur H. Butler, in charge of the regiment, called up the Division Reserve to replace the 1st Battalion with the 2nd. The 9th Marines encountered little resistance while overrunning several abandoned Japanese positions in its drive to the shores of Apra Harbor. The 3rd Battalion, with the support of naval gunfire and bombs, assaulted Cabras Island. Marines landing in LVTs found hundreds of mines hidden in dense brambles. General Turnage assessed the situation on July 22nd and wrote, Japanese resistance increased considerably today on the division's left and center. All of the 3rd Battalion's combat team were committed to a continuous attack since landing. The 21st CT, Combat Team, has been relieved by Division Reserve. Former is 40% depleted. Any further advance will continue to thin our lines. It now appears that an additional combat team is needed. The 9th is fully committed to the capture of Cabras and Petey. Urgently recommend an additional combat team be attached to this division at the earliest possible time. Turnage was refused the additional combat team he sought. The night of W plus 1 was fairly quiet in the 3rd Division sector, except for the 121 Marines who repulsed a Japanese counterattack complete with a mortar barrage and followed by a bayonet charge. The 3rd Amphibious Corps commander, General Geiger, was aware that most Japanese troops had not yet been encountered. He told the 3rd Division, close contact between adjacent units needed to become established by late afternoon and maintained throughout the night. Despite orders to close gaps and keep contact, the 3rd Division was spread too thin to hold. When they halted for the night, they realized the distance between the units had widened. As night fell, frontline troops held strong points with gaps between them covered by interlocking bands of fire. The 3rd Marines reached the high ground of Bunshu Ridge on the 23rd. They hunted the remaining enemy stragglers. The enemy had withdrawn from the immediate area but hadn't gone far. When the 21st Marines' patrols tried to link up with the 3rd Marines, they were pushed back by fire from cleverly hidden machine guns. Nearly impossible to spot in the underground and rock-strewn ravines. All along the ridges that the Marines held were stretches of deadly open ground that completely blanketed enemy fire from higher positions. On the night of the 23rd, the 9th Marines advanced through open territory dotted by hills, each of which a potential enemy bastion. Patrols sent south along the shoreline to contact the 1st Brigade took fire from the hills on its left flank. They also ran into a concentration of American artillery and naval gunfire directed at the enemy defenders on Arate. The patrol was permitted to turn back. On the 29th, the 3rd and 21st Marine Regiments finally made contact on the heights, but the link-up was an illusion. There were no solid front lines, only strong points. No one could be certain that the Japanese had all been accounted for, but the areas that had been probed and attacked now seemed secure. Every rifleman knew that much of the same lay ahead. They saw their next objective on the horizon to the front on the Mount Tenyo Road that crossed the high ground, framing the beachhead. The division had already suffered over 2,000 casualties, the majority in the infantry units. The Japanese 
who'd lost just as many, if not more men, in the North alone, showed no signs of abandoning their ferocious defense. General Takashina gathered his forces to prepare an all-out counterattack as Marines were advancing to their first objective on the FBHL, Force Beachhead Line, securing the high ground and linking up the two beachheads. Takashina had been bringing his reserve troops into the rugged hills along Mount Tenyo Road since the American landings. He called in his reserves from scattered positions all over the island. By July 25th, W Day Plus 4, he had over 5,000 men, mostly made up of the 10th Independent Mixed Regiment, in position and ready to attack. The fighting on the 25th was as intense as any since the Marines invaded. The 2-9 Marines were attached to the 3rd Marines to bring a relatively intact unit into the fight and give the battered 1-3 Marines a chance to recover. By nightfall, the 2-9 Marines had driven a wedge into the Japanese lines and took Mount Tenjo Road. They were only 400 yards short of reaching their objective at Font. Throughout the relentless firefights, the 3rd Marines blasted and burned their way through barriers of enemy cave defenses. They finally linked up with the 9th Marines on the left. At 1900, Company G of the 9th Marines pulled back 100 yards to position themselves forward of the road, giving them a better observation and field of fire. Company F reached an occupied rocky prominence some 150 yards ahead of Company G in the center, while they also pulled back for a better defense. The scene was set for a pitched battle on Font Ridge. Captain Lewis Wilson, who became the 26th Commandment of the Marine Corps in 1976, led Company F in the intense fight for Font Ridge in which casualties were caused on both sides from small arms fire at point-blank range. Captain Wilson was awarded the Medal of Honor for his leadership, doggedness, and organizational skill under fire. Wilson was wounded three times while he led attacks into the core of the fought action. Part of his citation reads, In fierce fighting and hand-to-hand encounters, he led his men in a furiously waged battle for ten hours and tenaciously held his line and repelled fanatic counterattacks from the Japanese until he crushed the last efforts of the hard-pressed enemy. Captain Wilson led and organized the 17-man patrol that climbed the slope in the face of the continuous enemy fire, seizing Font's critical high ground. Colonel Fraser West recalled the battle for Font Ridge as brisk, bitter, and close. A young officer, West commanded Company G and reinforced Wilson's unit. He joined Company F's flank and then reconnoitered to spot enemy positions and shared the night in a joint command post with Captain Wilson. In late afternoon on the 25th, A platoon of four tanks from Company C made their way up Mount Tenjo Road and got into position facing the Japanese strongpoints. At the climax of the battle, Wilson and West's companies were still holding their positions. First Lieutenant Wilsey O'Bannon, the XO of Company F, got down slope from his exposed position and brought up two tanks. By using telephones mounted in the rear of these tanks to communicate with the Marines inside, O'Bannon described targets for the tanks as he positioned them to support West's and Wilson's Marines. The tanks came up with a precious cargo of ammunition. Volunteers stuffed grenades into their pockets and hung bandoliers over shoulders, pocketed clips, and carried grenade boxes on their shoulders to deliver like birthday presents all along the line to Companies F and G and what was left of Company E. Colonel West used a tank radio circuit to call in naval gunfire. This guaranteed that all the terrain before him would be lit all night by star shells and high-explosive naval gunfire. At dawn on July 26th, Over 600 dead Japanese laid in front of the 2-9 Marine positions.
but the battle was not over. General Turnage ordered the crest of the reverse slope taken. More Japanese counterattacks would come, and again fighting would be hand to hand. But by July 28th, the capture of Font Ridge was no longer in question. Companies E, F, and G took their objectives on the crest, costing the battalion 242 casualties in four murderous days. The 21st Marines did not have it any easier on the 25th. After a hard morning of fighting, they were able to clear the front in the center of the line. The 221 Marines dealt with similar pockets of die-hard enemy soldiers, like those that held up the 29 Marines on font. Hidden in cave positions on the eastern draw of the Asan River, inland from the beachhead. The Japanese were destroyed only after repeated marine assaults and close-in fighting. According to the official Marine Corps history of the campaign, every foot of ground that fell to the Marines were paid in heavy casualties, and every man available was needed in the assault. The 9th Marines made good progress on the 25th and reached their objective of the Sasa River by 0915. The 9th Marines had even taken more ground than was planned. From there, General Turnage repositioned the 9th Marines to support the fighting on the struggling left flank. The 2nd Battalion pulled out of position to reinforce the 3rd Marines, and the remaining two battalions spread out a little further in their position. A determined enemy attack hit the 3rd Division Marines on the night of July 25th. The intensity of the Japanese counterattack was matched across the 3rd Division's front. It wasn't long before Japanese troops roaming the rear slipped into Marine perimeters and snuck downstream into valleys and ravines leading to the beaches. Major Henry Applington II commanded the 1st 3rd Marines, the only infantry division. His Marines held positions on the hills of what had been a quiet sector. He wrote, Heavy rain came when it got dark. On the line, Marines huddled under ponchos in their wet foxholes, trying to figure out the meaning of the obvious activity by the Japanese. Near midnight, the Japs were probing the 21st Marines' lines and sloping over into those of the 9th Marines. All was quiet in our circle of hills, and we received no notifications when the probing increased its intensity or at 0400 when the enemy opened their attack. My first inkling came at about 0430 when my three companies on the hills erupted into fire and called for mortar support. I talked to the company commanders and asked them what was going on, only to be told that the Japs were all around them. The enemy was close. Three of my dead had been killed by bayonet attacks. Private Dale Fetzer was a dog handler assigned to the 19 Marines with his black Labrador retriever. His dog Skipper was asleep in front of his handler's foxhole. Suddenly, Skipper bolted upright. His nose pointed up and toward Mount Tenjo. Private Fetzer shouted, Get the lieutenant! The Japs are coming! Japanese troops poured down the slopes at 0400 in a furious bonsai attack. The enemy had been sighted drinking during the afternoon in the higher hills, and now some appeared drunk. The 21st Marines were along a low ridge close to Mount Tenjo Road. The bonsai charge smashed against the 3rd Battalion, and the enemy seized a machine gun position, quickly recaptured by Marines. The 3rd Division held a thin front on the right flank of the 21st Marines and to the left of the 9th Marines. Some of the Japanese raiders got through the sparsely manned gap between the battalions. The Japanese charged fearlessly at the artillery, tanks, and ammunition supply dumps. Their attack was scattered and unorganized, but fighting was brutal and shattered the hastily erected Marine roadblock between the battalions. Some attackers got through the lines along the front. Fifty enemy troops reached the division hospital. Doctors evacuated the gravely wounded, 
but the walking wounded joined stretcher bearers, cooks, bakers, and corpsmen to form a line fighting off the attackers. One of the walking wounded, Private Michael Ryan, ran with a wounded foot through crossfire to join the line and help fight off the enemy assault. Colonel George Van Orden assembled two companies of the 3rd Pioneer Battalion to eliminate this threat. Marine pioneers killed 33 enemy troops in less than three hours and only lost three of their men. The 3rd Medical Battalion took 20 casualties, but only one patient was killed in the fighting. For many men in this furious and confused melee breaking out over Marine positions, Corporal Charles Moore's experiences weren't unique. His outfit held a position along a quarter mile from Font Plateau. He later wrote, We set up on the road that made a sharp turn overlooking a draw. It was Second Platoon's last stand, three attacks that night, and by the third no one was left to fight, so they broke through. They came in droves, throwing hand grenades, and hacked up some of our platoon. In the morning, I had only ten rounds of ammo left and half the clip for my BAR. I was holding those rounds back in case I needed them to make a break for it. Everyone was quiet, either wounded or dead. The Japs came in to take out their dead and wounded steps from the edge of my foxhole. I held my breath. I watched them as they milled around until dawn, and then they left. With the seizure of Font Ridge, the capture of the beachhead was now complete. The 3rd Division fought bravely throughout the bloody night until they finished off the determined Japanese enemy on Guam. What made the fighting for Font important was the fact that the advance to the north end of the island could not take place until Font Ridge was seized and held. The enemy attack also failed in the south, although it was touch-and-go at times. However, Japanese sailors on Arate were just as committed as the soldiers on Font to drive the Allies from Guam. <laughs>